Hello and welcome to the tutorials brought to you by WPWiz.net. In our previous tutorial I showed you how to install a web server that you can copy on a pen drive and take with you wherever you go and we also installed WordPress in less than eight minutes. Now let's go back to this folder that we created. Um, actually let's go back to the web server first and launch it. Yeah, so we click run and let me talk a little bit about this web server application for a moment. If this is the first time you ever install a web server on your computer, you don't really have to worry a lot about anything. And that's the beauty of this tool. However, there are a few settings that you can do. First of all, the language, because by default this is uh, presumably Dutch. So you can select English here and that makes life a lot easier. Okay. And you can control Apache and MySQL settings. However, I would recommend that if you don't know what you're doing, rather not touch anything if you don't really have to. But do know that you can do modifications to the configuration files if needed. So our web server is up and running. You can see this here by status online. So let's go back to our WordPress installation that we created in our previous tutorial. Let's hit localhost and add the folder WordPress in which we installed WordPress earlier. And here you see the front page of your WordPress blog. Now again, assuming this is the first time ever that you install WordPress, this is the out of the box content and design that WordPress comes with when you do a fresh install. But we do want to change this a little bit and I'll walk you through how to do this. First of all, we have to go to the login screen, which is wp-admin. So if you just type in in your browser wp-admin, you get redirected to the login screen. We're going to log back in. Actually, I'm going to say remember me. And now you're in the administration screen of WordPress. Now I remember the very first time that I installed WordPress, this felt very confusing and there's a lot of information to take in. So let's forget a bit about everything that you see on this front screen. There's a lot of information um, that comes with the demonstration content that was installed out of the box. But let me walk you through the main functionality of WordPress and explain to you what you, each of these things do. You'll see here on the left hand navigation menu here are the main settings and uh, options of WordPress. Let me walk you through this list in a second. In posts, you can administrate the blog posts that you publish. So you can create new blog posts, you can delete posts, you can assign categories to these posts and even tags. Posts are what define a blog. They are the dynamic content that you publish once in a while when you have information to share with people. Moving on, you have your media library. The media library stores any files like pictures, um, PDFs, zip files, whatever you want to actually. And you can upload pictures by clicking on add new and then use them in posts. Links is a link library. Think of it as a small Google where you can create a list of your favorite links um, that you want to share with visitors to your website. Moving on to pages. Now, pages are a bit different. In essence, they are the same as posts. However, pages are designed to be static. So a good example for a page would be a disclaimer, mm, terms of use, privacy, anything that's linked to content that doesn't change very often. So as opposed to posts, pages are really what used to be your static HTML page when you used to use front page or any other HTML program. And whatever you do in pages is usually meant to stay. This doesn't mean that you can't easily change the content of pages. However, in their nature, pages are supposed to be more static. Then we have the comments feature, which is a significant part of a blog is to have people interact with you so that they can post comments to your articles and you can respond back to them. 
and in this comments part you can just administrate these. So these options pretty much define everything that WordPress does and all the options that we're going to go through now are linked more to the back end. So things that you do to change the look and feel of your website. First of all we have the appearance section. In the appearance section you have the possibility to choose a theme for your site. So you can download themes for free um, on the wordpress.org website and there's a huge variety. You can also define widgets. Now what are widgets? Widgets are small pieces of program code that um, you can place in certain areas of your website subject to how your theme was designed. So for example if you want to have a sidebar, and let me just show you how this looks in your blog similar to this, the out of the box, you will see that there's main content on the page. Actually this is a post here. Huh? And in this sidebar here you have different sections of content and these are all defined by widgets. So the categories widget, the archives widget, recent comments widget and recent post widgets. These are all pieces of code that without requiring you to do any programming publish certain type of content. Other than that we can also create menus which are useful to, to facilitate the navigation of our website and we can um, work on several theme options such as specifying a header, background and we can also edit CSS if we really want to. But these are less frequently used let's say. Plugins are what make the difference in WordPress. With plugins you can basically add any functionality you want. There's a huge variety of plugins out there. Most of them are for free and they can really transform how your website feels and works. In a separate tutorial we will be talking about some of the most useful plugins that you should install in any WordPress installation. In the user section we can administrate our users. If we have a blog and we allow people to sign up, for example to a forum or we request people to sign up in order to comment so that we avoid spam, we can administrate our users here. It's a nice way of interacting with people and making them come back to your website. In tools we don't really have a lot of things. It's basically an area where you can import or export your posts if you were to move from one blog to another, but there are more handy ways to, to move content from one blog to the other. I usually don't use the tools section an awful lot. And finally we have the settings area. The settings area is basically the heart of WordPress. It's where you define a lot of things, the name of your blog, your email, uh, address, whether the blog should be published um, or available to Google and the search engines. You can define a lot of settings um, around reading and writing, so around the um, input forms when you post messages. The, the rules when you put your blog on the internet around discussions. Um, as you know nowadays spam is a big problem so there's a lot of possibilities to set up how people can comment and if a comment gets approved automatically or whether it gets held for moderation um, so that you can see if it's spam and in the latter case just discard it. There are also settings around media so you can define the dimensions of your thumbnails, the folder in which your uploaded files are stored, a lot of things that are very um, much related to configuration and that you usually go through once and then pretty much don't touch them anymore. An important part is the permalinks. This defines how pages get displayed in your browser. So whether it's a um, style like this with a question mark or whether you want to have beautiful links that um, basically have a certain logic in their structure. We'll talk about these things in a future tutorial to get you more acquainted with other things first. I think it's best we stop here for a moment. Thanks for watching and feel free to visit wpwiz.net for any questions you have.